क्वेश्चन नंबर सिक्सटीन इंटीग्रल ऑफ ए रेस टू थ्री लॉग एक्स इन टू एक्स रेस टू फोर प्लस वन द होल रेस टू माइनस वन नो यू नो दिस प्रॉपर्टी ऑफ एक्सपोनेंशियल एंड लॉग दिस विल गो इन पावर ह्योर सो दिस इज ए रेस टू लॉग एक्स क्यूब इन दिस रेस टू माइनस वन आई टेक इन द डिनोमिनेटर सो एक्स रेस टू फोर प्लस वन द होल डी एक्स now you know here this will get cancelled so it is just x cube upon 1 plus x raised to 4 now very easily you can see that the derivative of this one is almost this if i multiply and divide with some constant so multiply and dividing by 4 why because what's the derivative of denominator 4x cube that you can just observe from this so it is which form f dash upon f log of mod Of but here mode is not important because one plus x raised to four is always positive. So we have this. I have used this formula. Integral of f dash upon f equals to log of mode of f plus c that we have used. Okay. Next question number seventeen. Integral of f dash a x plus b into f of a x plus b the whole rest to n. How will do this? Very simple. Where is the problem in the, uh, which portion where you have uh, difficult to integrate? That is rest to n. So I'll take this equals to t. So substitution. Put f of a x plus b the whole rest this much only sorry equals to t differentiation imagine this as x what's the derivative of f f dash inner expression as it is by chain rule what's the derivative of a x plus b that is a equals to d t by d x and d x all right here this is just by chain rule remember What's the differentiation of f of a x plus b? Imagine this as x. What's the derivative of f x f dash? By chain rule, derivative of this, which is a here, d x equals to d t. Now, this much you required. You don't want a, so I'll take a on the other side. Therefore, here one upon a outside integral. This and this gives us d t. So t raised to n d t. What's the integral of t raised to n? Raise the power by one. N plus one, n plus one plus c. And what was t? T was here f of a x plus b. The whole raised to n plus one upon n plus one plus c. That's required integral here. Okay. Next question, question number eighteen. That's an important example of this exercise. Let me write here question number eighteen. I equals to integral of one upon root of sine cube x into sine of x plus alpha. Here, remember, alpha is constant. Integration is. Purely depends upon the variable x. So, what I'll do first here is I'll open that uh, sine x plus alpha by addition rule. You will realize in the next step what I'm trying to do is here sine cube as it is. What's expansion of this sine x cos alpha plus cos x sine alpha. The whole dx. Now, if I have in case sine raised to four, then I can take outside the square roots. So from the bracket, I'll take sine x common. So inside the square root, if I take sine x common, this becomes sine raised to four. What about inside the bracket? This is just cosine alpha. If I take sine x common, here you have by sine x, so it would be just cot x into sine alpha, the whole dx. What I did, just taking sine x common from the bracket. 
I repeat. So this sin x will come out. Your sin is not there. So we'll get the upon sin x here. And sin upon cos gives us cot sin alpha as it is. Now you take this uh, outside the square root. So it becomes sin square and you take in the numerator. So it becomes cos x square, remember. Upon here root of cos alpha plus sin alpha into cot x. Now, very simple. Take this much equals to t. What? Sorry, I'm sorry. This is uh, okay. This is fine. Now, what I'll do? I'll take the substitution. This is constant. Remember, this is also constant. And you know that the derivative of cot is minus cos x square. That was the main objective to convert this sign into cot. So now this sign raised to four will come out from the square root. It becomes sine square and taking into numerator, so it becomes cos x square. Now put inner expression equals to t, remember, inside the square root. You can take t square also, not important. Derivative being constant 0, your sin alpha as it is. Derivative of cot is minus cos x square dx equals to dt. Now this much you need remember. So I'll take minus sin alpha down here. So that minus 1 upon sin alpha will come out. This much is dt now. Okay, this minus sin alpha taken on the other side. So it's outside. This is dt here, and inside the square root you have t. So this is nothing but what? Here. This is nothing but t raised to minus 1 by 2. And what's the integral of t raised to minus 1 by 2? Minus 1 by 2 plus 1 upon minus 1 by 2 plus 1 plus c. Therefore, now this is equals to uh, this is just half and this will go in the numerator so minus 2 by sin alpha this is t raised to 1 by 2 which is root and uh, what was t? t was this expression cos alpha plus sin alpha into cortex plus c If you want, you can just write cos by sine that you can do here. So I'll just write that step here. If I write that step here, this is cos by sine. So you have cos alpha into sin x plus plus uh, here sin alpha into cos x. upon sin x just what I did instead of cot I wrote cos by sin and taking LCM now numerator is you know it's that uh, addition formula so finally minus 2 by sin alpha as it is here inside the square root this is the formula of sin x plus alpha upon sin x plus c that's required integral here. Okay. Next number 19, which is also an important example here. I equals to integral of sine inverse root x minus cosine inverse root x upon sine inverse root x plus cos inverse root x. If you recall one result from inverse trigo sin inverse x plus cos inverse x is always pi by 2 so I'll use that as sin inverse root x plus cos inverse root x equals to pi by 2 you know it so the denominator become pi by 2 and again using this result at least cos inverse root x you can write as what pi by 2 minus sin inverse x so I'll do these two things sin inverse root x as it is Instead of this, you can write pi by 2 minus sine inverse root x upon pi by 2. What I did, I have used that result twice.
first the entire denominator expression is replaced by pi by 2 and in place of cos inverse root x is this so I'll keep this 2 by pi outside because it is constant this minus minus will be plus so this will be double uh, you have so twice sin inverse root x minus pi by 2 the whole dx now we split into two integrals so this is 4 by pi sin inverse root x minus if you multiply this two this is just 1 dx so this is 4 by pi I'll call this as i1 minus what's integral of 1 that is x plus c we call this as 1 where i1 is given by this what's i1 integral of sin inverse root x dx so to solve this you know if you have root put inner expression equals to t so put x equals to t square that you know so therefore dx equals to 2t dt let me place that therefore i1 equals to integral of uh, sin inverse t what is dx that is 2t dt being too constant i'll take that outside here so taking two outside here so you are getting sin inverse t into t dt now this is the product of two functions so we use integration by parts so you need to select u and v how do you select u and v according to Liet rule this is inverse trigger and this is algebraic so here inverse occurs first and then algebraic so this should be u and this should be v so if you do it by parts here 2 being constant as it is sin inverse t being u will come outside integral of t t square by 2 you are integrating with respect to t remember minus inside the integral here what is derivative of sin inverse t you know 1 upon root of 1 minus t square into same thing integral of t which is t square by 2 dt okay now you can take this 2 outside and it will get cancelled with this this 2 this 2 will get cancelled with this so we are left with here sin inverse t into t square minus this is t square upon root of 1 minus t square dt now question is evaluation of this integral so how will you evaluate here this is like quadratic upon quadratic so I need to set this expression over there this one as it is remember here we are through I need minus t square so I'll take that minus inside so you are getting minus t square so this become minus become plus then I need one here so adding one subtracting one remember upon root of 1 minus t square dt now do individual division this upon this one upon this okay so this is equals to sin inverse t into t square plus this expression upon root so you are left with root of 1 minus t square dt minus here 1 upon root of 1 minus t square dt this upon this this is like x upon root x so what is this this is just root x you know so here you are left with root expression and uh, one upon this so we have this one now both are known integrals this can be integrated very easily here sin inverse t into t square plus how do we integrate this this you can write one square this is a square minus x square formula so that can be integrated you know by which formula if you remember x by 2 into the same expression plus you know a square by 2 sine inverse x by a so here what we'll get uh, this is nothing but t by 2 x by 2 into the same expression plus a square by 2 1 square by 2 
sin inverse x by a that is t by 1 here you know this is the formula and what about this one this is a derivative of sin inverse t so here you have integral of sin inverse t remember okay so finally uh, we uh, just rewrite here sin inverse t into t square plus t by 2 into the same expression plus 1 by 2 here uh, half sin inverse t and minus this so here you are left with let me write just half with minus sin sin inverse t and now we are putting the value of t what was t that is root x so sin inverse root x into t square t square means x plus t t means root x by 2 into t square that is x here ha minus half sin inverse t what is t that is root x okay this is if you just go back to beginning i1 and therefore by 1 now finally by 1 i equals to 4 by pi into i1 i1 means this expression that is x into sin inverse root x i wrote x first plus you can just take this common root here so that is x minus x square by 2 minus 1 by 2 minus 1 by 2 sin inverse root x minus x plus c you can just combine this two you can combine this two take sin inverse root x common so 4 by pi as it is if i take sin inverse root x common so you have x minus 1 by 2 into sin inverse root x plus this one as it is here x minus x square by 2 minus x plus c this is the required integral I understand it's little bit lengthy but uh, there is no other way 4 by pi so if you want just you can write 2x minus 1 by 2 sin inverse root x uh, this is root of x minus x square by 2 minus x plus c. That's your final integral of the given expression. Okay. Next question here. Uh, that's question number 28, which also a good question. Let me do that. Question number 20 here. i equals to inside the integral you have root of 1 minus root x upon 1 plus root x dx i equals to we have 1 inside the square root 1 minus root x upon 1 plus root x to dx So here um, there are two ways, you know one way is you can just put root expression equals to t square. So I am putting x equals to t square or you can do this way also. You know 1 minus cos theta upon 1 plus cos theta is 10 square theta. So you can put uh, here uh, x equals to cos square theta substitution. So here dx equals to 2 cos theta derivative of cos is minus sin theta d theta and you can continue this is one way The another way is this, I will do like this here, mm. dx equals to 2t dt, 
differentiation here. So therefore i equals to inside the square root 1 minus t upon 1 plus t into 2t dt. Okay. Now the 2 will come out here because it's a constant. Here inside the square root just to make the numerator free from the square root what I'll do I'll multiply and divide with 1 minus t you know conjugate t dt as it is so this is equals to twice now here numerator is free from the square root upon root of 1 minus t squared here into t dt so numerator will be t minus t square upon root of 1 minus t square dt okay now here adding and subtracting one over here because I want to set this expression over there I want 1 minus t square so adding 1, 1 minus t square this t is already there I've added 1 so I need to subtract 1 this is just a rearrangement upon root of 1 minus t square dt I'll do individual division this upon this so it's like x upon root x so you are left with 1 minus t square dt with square root this 2 as it is outside here I'll take minus common here so this is 1 minus t why I'm doing this because now here uh, you are getting one factor common 1 minus t into 1 plus t ok let me keep right now this one as it is here I'm keeping this one as it is 2 times root of 1 minus t square dt minus 2 here 1 factor of root 1 minus t will get cancelled so you are left with 1 square root inside there so inside the square root you have 1 minus t upon 1 plus t dt I hope this is clear to you this root 1 plus t factor as it is this is this much is x upon root x so you are left with 1 root over there it's like root x upon uh, this root y so it would be whole root x minus y like this what I did here let me show you out of uh, these and this you are just left with root expression in the numerator and root in the denominator is there so I wrote, I wrote the common root now over here again I will eliminate the square root from the numerator how do I eliminate so this way first expression again as it is I will be doing nothing with first expression here remember so 2 into this is root of 1 minus t square as it is minus 2 into as I did earlier multiplying and dividing with 1 minus t why we are doing this so numerator will be free from the square root so 1 minus t square dt here twice as it is this is 1 minus t upon root of 1 minus t square dt now we'll do individual division there again um, we'll continue with the same expression here if I do individual division this is 1 upon root of 1 minus t square here this minus minus will be plus Two into t upon root of one minus t square dt. Okay. Now this integrate this can be integrated very easily. Here you have linear upon quadratic. So I'll set the derivative of this. What's the derivative of this expression? Minus two. So I need to set minus two here. So two times 
root of 1 minus t square dt as it is minus 2 times 1 upon root of 1 minus t square as it is here I want to set minus 2t there so minus 2t taking 2 inside setting minus n and I'll take this one in the numerator so 1 minus t square raised to minus 1 by 2 dt this will be in the numerator okay now each of this can be integrated very easily uh, what's the integral of the first part twice as it is x by 2 that is t by 2 into same expression plus a square by 2 that is 1 by 2 a square means here 1 square sine inverse x by a that is t by 1 which is just this much minus here this is just you know sine inverse t minus if you remember we had one of the formula you can take this as some new variable or function here f raised to n into f dash so raise the power by 1 so 1 minus t square raised to 1 by 2 minus 1 by 2 plus 1 so 1 by 2 upon 1 by 2 plus c which formula have used here this one if you remember integral of f raised to n into f dash raised the power by 1 n plus 1 upon n plus 1 or you can take just the substitution remember so finally take two inside so this is t into root of 1 minus t square here this is sine inverse t this is minus 2 times sine inverse t this 2 will be in the product root of 1 minus t square plus c and now finally we are putting the value of t which is nothing but root x so this is root x into root of t square t square is just x remember from this 2 you will get just minus sine inverse x so here you will be having minus sine inverse t means root x minus 2 times root of 1 minus t squared it is just x plus c if you just go back to LHS this was i question number 21 2 plus sin 2x upon 1 plus cos 2x into it as 2x so you must have realized here you need to use this formula e raised to x f plus f dash that is nothing but e raised to x into f we had earlier such questions so what we do we simplify this and how we'll simplify this denominator is very clear to you uh, this is nothing but you know 1 plus cos 2x it is just 2 cos square x the double angle formula you know cos square x equals to 1 plus cos 2x the whole by 2 uh, what about uh, numerator that is 2 plus sin 2x is 2 sin x cos x Eras to x as it is dx as it is here this is that half angle formula this is equals to now uh, 2 2 will get cancelled we'll do individual division okay let me write one more step here 1 plus sin x cos x upon cos square into eras to x dx now do individual division so 1 upon cos square that is x square plus cos cos will get cancelled sin by cos which is 10x e raised to x dx now it is which standard form you know this is f and this is f dash so final integral is e raised to x into 10x plus c that's required integral ok next question here 22 integral of x square plus x plus 1 upon 
x plus 1 the whole square into x plus 2 dx. Now you have product of two linear factors in the denominator. So we use the partial fraction method. Not only that, the power of this expression is 2 in the numerator. Here 2 and 1, so total is 3. So we can use the partial fraction method. So how we'll do this? You know, this is partial fraction method with repeated factor. a upon x plus 1 plus b upon x plus 1 the whole square plus c upon x plus 2 the whole dx. You know this is partial fraction method with repeated factor. a upon x plus 1 b upon x plus 1 the whole square plus c upon Okay, so we need to find a, b and c. We, how we'll get this? We need to compare the numerators. Here, in this expression, numerator is, you know, x square plus x plus 1. What about here? You need to set this LCM, remember, over here. So, x plus 1 whole square and x plus 2. Here, 1 x plus 1 is there. So, you have x plus 1 into x plus 2 plus b into x plus 1 whole square is there so you have just x plus 2 plus your c into your x plus 2 is there so you need to have x plus 1 the whole square what I did I have set this expression over here so I repeat this so to set x plus 1 whole square into x plus 2, you required one more x plus 1 into x plus 2. Your square is already there, so you required x plus 2. Here, x plus 2 is there, so you required x plus 1 the whole square. I hope this is clear to you. And that This is very important step here, remember. Now we take different values of x. One you can take minus 1, the other one you can take minus 2. Third one, you can choose any value. Okay, so here if if x is here minus 1, you know why we are choosing this. Then what is left hand side? Minus 1 whole square, minus 1 plus 1, so it is just 1. This is a into 0 plus b into minus 1 plus 2, 1 and c into 0. So we'll get the b from this. So what's b from this? It is just 1. Next you can choose minus 2. If I put minus 2, left hand side is minus 2 whole square which is 4, 4 plus 1, 5, 5 minus 2, 3. What about right hand side? This is a into 0, b into 0, plus c into I am putting minus 2 there, minus 2 plus 1, minus 1 whole square, so that is 1. So you have C which is 3. And third you can put any constant, so I am just putting x equals to 0, remember. This you know very well, we did it number of times. So left hand side 0 plus 0 equals plus 1, so left hand side is 1. You are A into 1 into 2 plus B into 2 here plus c into 1. Now b and c, you know 1 and 3 here. So 2a I am keeping as it is. b is 1, so this is 2 and c is here 3, so 3. So this is 5, so minus 4 equals to 2a and therefore a equals to minus 2. So now you got all the three constraints. So I'm placing there. So therefore, here i equals to i means above integral. What is a minus two upon x plus one? What is b? One upon x plus one the whole square plus c. What is c? That is three upon x plus two. Now all are standard integrals. Remember minus 2 being constant as it is log of mode of x plus 1 
what's integral of 1 upon x square you know it is minus 1 upon x plus 1 why this you think for this plus 3 into log of mod of x plus 2 plus c I repeat this minus 2 upon x plus 1 log of mod of x plus 1 what's the integral of 1 upon x square minus 1 upon x so here uh, 1 upon minus 1 upon x plus 1 plus 3 times log of mod of x plus 2 3 constant integral of 1 upon x is log of mod of x plus 2 plus c this is like x remember here this is like x this is like x because it's a linear function and everywhere the coefficient of x is 1 remember question number 23 this is also an important example you are ten inverse of 1 minus x upon 1 plus x normally if you have both the factors together example number 20th also you can see that also there also I had suggested this put x equals 2 you can put cos theta why this because you know 1 minus cos theta upon 1 plus cos theta if you remember 10 square x equals to 1 minus cosine 2x upon 1 plus cos 2x this is very standard formula you know this so we, we use this substitution here so dx equals to minus sin theta d theta so therefore i equals to inside the integral 10 inverse of root of 1 minus cos theta upon 1 plus cos theta into minus sin theta d theta this is equals to I'll keep that minus sign outside this is 10 inverse you know this is 2x here x the half angle so this is just 10 square theta by 2 and that square root and square will get cancelled so we'll get theta by 2 sin theta d theta now here this 10 inverse and 10 will get cancelled so you are just left with theta by 2 so half I'll keep outside minus sin is already there now theta sin theta now what we do we use integration by parts you know this is u and this is v so we do by parts minus 1 by 2 as it is theta will come out first this linear function you know integral of sine minus cos theta minus inside the integral derivative of theta with respect to theta 1 integral of sine theta is minus cos theta d theta you are integrating with respect to theta remember minus 1 by 2 as it is this is minus theta cos theta minus minus plus integral of cos in turn again sine theta plus c now the last step is substitution in form of what x here remember so here uh, let me take 1 by 2 inside this so 1 by 2 minus minus will be plus what's theta from this cos inverse x what is cos theta that is x minus 1 by 2 you need to find sine now sine you can write root 1 minus root 1 minus cos square but what is cos square that is x square plus c so here integral is given by this I repeat this what I did here instead of this I root 1 minus cos square because I have substitution about cos function but what is cos theta that is just x so 1 minus x square that's what I placed here directly Question number 24. Now, here I'll just give you the hint. Here, if you want, you can use the property of the log function and take this x raised to 4 inside the square root. <coughs> so, 
uh, you will get your let me write x square plus 1 as it is if I use the property of the log function this is x square plus 1 this 2 will go power into power and this is x square upon this is x raised to 4 dx now you think about this not difficult task try to do it I'll go to question number 5 now 25 that's about definite integral i equals to pi by 2 to pi e raised to x into 1 minus sin x upon 1 minus cosine x dx this is just same as question number 21 more or less it's like this only so here what I'll do I'll convert into a single term at the end you know you are going to use that e raised to x f plus f dash formula you know this integral of e raised to x f plus f dash that you know you are going to use that concept here so I'll get the e raised to x into f plus c that's your answer okay so here e raised to x as it is this is 2 sin square x by 2 1 minus half angle formula 2 sin x by 2 into cosine x by 2 the whole dx so integral from pi by 2 to pi e raised to x do individual division so here 1 by 2 here 1 by 2 1 upon sin square which is cos x square x by 2 2 2 will get cancelled 1 sin will get cancelled here you are just cot x by 2 now here you know integral of cot is minus cos x square so if you take this much with minus sin as f then this is exactly derivative what is derivative of you can see minus cot x by 2 so minus minus will be plus cos x square x by 2 and by chain rule you will get into 1 by 2 that is there so therefore here integral will be e raised to x into uh, this is your f so minus cot x by 2 and limits are from where to where pi by 2 to pi so now upper limit minus lower limit so first we put upper limit here what is upper limit here minus sign I'll keep outside e raised to pi into uh, this is cot pi by 2 remember x by 2 is there so pi by 2 you know cot pi by 2 is 0 minus now we are going to put lower limit so this is e raised to pi by 2 and here you have cot pi by 4 because by 2 is already there now this is 0 so this entire expression is 0 minus minus will be plus this is just 1 so e raised to pi by 2 that's the value of the integral okay next question question number 26 here your i equals to integral 0 to pi by 4 sin x into cos x upon cosine raised to 4 plus sin raised to 4 now uh, we already discussed earlier if you remember when you are cos raised to 4 plus sin raised to 4 always you can use this concept you make it perfect square by adding and subtracting middle term so you can write cos square plus sin square the whole square minus 2 sin square cos square adding and subtracting middle term you know it this is just 1 so 1 minus 2 sin square x cos square so if I place there here i equals to 
integral equals to here what we'll get 0 2 pi by 4 as it is as a limit sin x into cos x as it is upon 1 minus 2 sin square x cos square x okay then what we'll do this is just trigger simplification remember now uh, you can have here 4 so I'll just do like this 2 outside 0 2 pi by 4 this sin x cos x right now as it is 2 minus 4 sin square cos squared you must have realized why I did like this because now this is nothing but the sin square 2x and this 2 sin cos x you know 0 2 pi by 4 this gives us sin 2x upon here 2 minus what is this sin square 2x I'll do one more thing here this is 0 2 pi by 4 2 I'll write as 1 plus 1 so 1 plus 1 minus sin square 2x Chalo then what is 1 minus sin square 2x it is nothing but you know cos square 2x